Good morning. Uh, Mark Oswald from ADM Investor Services International. Um, wanting to share a few thoughts on US payrolls data today, the US midterm elections, and the much under discussed rally in the Chinese yuan versus the dollar. Um, so, shall we start off with uh, markets? Um, this is one of my favorite charts, as I think you all know. Uh, it's the US high yield bond spread versus the SP 500 which has uh, gone into a very close correlation, inverse correlation mode. So as and when the uh, high yield bond spread widens, so the US equity market tips out, uh, we seem to be at a, a form of inflection point uh, on this. Um, I think it still really emphasizes the point that we're not necessarily in a meltdown period for US equities, but rather in a period where heightened or higher volatility than we've been used to over the past three to five years uh, is the name of the game rather than necessarily seeing us tip out. Um, the fact of the matter is when one looks at that spread between high yield bonds and US Treasuries at 371 and even having been at 380 um, just recently is not actually high by any historical standards. By normal standards, you would expect that spread to be somewhere in the region of 500 basis points, not uh, 3, 320 where we were, or 380 as we have been of late. Um, but moving swiftly on, um, let's have a look at the next chart, which is um, the US dollar index. Um, we have the US midterm elections coming up, and obviously before that we have the US payrolls data today. US payrolls data expected to be pretty robust, 200,000. That comes off obviously uh, the back of a weak reading that we saw back in uh, September due to hurricane effects. That was only 134,000. So one has to keep that any 200,000 or above rise in, in a certain perspective. Uh, average hourly earnings are expected to uh, uh, be slightly um, lower in terms of month on month, 0.2%, uh, as against 0.3% for the last three months. Um, but because of there's a big base effect from uh, October 2017, where we had a minus 0.2 again due to, due to weather effects, um, the year on year rate would pick up to 3.1% not necessarily actually a sign that US wage, uh, wage uh, growth is accelerating, but rather just due to those base effects. Um, so uh, the dollar is sort of in everyone's sight at the moment with uh, the US midterm elections coming up. There are concerns that basically uh, <clears throat> we will see a, uh, a weaker trend for the US dollar. Um, thanks to the idea that the Democrats might win the, uh, the House and therefore leave us with gridlock. Uh, there's a certain irony in this, um, and the irony is simply that the idea that we sell off uh, the US dollar on the back of Democrats, so-called left-leaning Democrats, uh, winning the, uh, either of the houses uh, in the US uh, in Congress, um, would be uh, basically an idea that we have higher taxes and bigger spending. Well, the truth of the matter actually is when we look at things, the, the two biggest uh, deficit, budget deficit spenders over the past 40 years have been Ronald Reagan and now Donald Trump. Uh, so fear of Democrats is, uh, seems to be somewhat mis misplaced, even if I would recognize the fact that unless Mr. Trump's uh, big spending plans carry on, then perhaps we can experience, uh, expect a slightly slower period of growth, which we would have done in any case coming up, having had this uh, big fiscal boost that we've had this year. But um, the question then becomes, as one, of, uh, uh, one good friend of mine uh, asked me yesterday, which currency actually benefits most if we are going to see a slightly weaker dollar in the wake of the US midterm elections? making the assumption, which may be bold and may not prove to be correct, uh, that the Democrats do win the House of Representatives. Well, let's start having a look at um, uh, our good friend, the Chinese Yuan. Um, first of all, I think an important point always to bear in mind with uh, China is that Chinese government bond yield spreads may have narrowed to the US, but they're still above. Um, and therefore, the incentive 
uh, to invest in China as opposed to Europe or Japan or anywhere else in, uh, in uh, the high quality end of Asia uh, is actually quite high, particularly in the conservative area. One can forget about the stock market for the time being. Uh, that will be what it is. Um, but uh, those 10 year bond yields still look very attractive relative to the US despite that tighter spread. Now let's have a look at what's been happening over the last two days. Um, and I think this is probably my least, uh, well, my most under discussed point in financial markets. We seem to be so focused on the US dollar uh, versus the euro, perhaps against the yen and also uh, the gyrations of uh, sterling against the dollar, thanks to all the Brexit hither and thither. Um, but this one is a very significant move. I think it's very interesting because last Monday, uh, the 23rd, rather than this, the Monday of this week, we saw a huge spike in um, <clears throat> uh, Chinese yuan uh, spot trading volumes. And when one looks back over the history of the past uh, three to five years, whenever you get a big spike in those trading volumes, volumes, it tends to mark an inflection point for the Chinese yuan. And we seem to have that. We've rallied very hard, both in spot terms. We're down at 689. And uh, on the next chart, you can also see that um, playing out in the one year NDF even more severely. Um, <clears throat> So um, rather than considering whether the euro or the yen or sterling or any of the other Western currencies uh, may be the biggest beneficiary, it may actually prove to be the yuan, which is the biggest beneficiary. Above all, given we're in a situation where Donald Trump seems to be making somewhat more conciliatory noises in terms of uh, China-US uh, trade relations, um, and if we are in that situation and China feels less pressure uh, via, on its economy via way of the trade tariffs, then perhaps uh, the yuan is in a position where it can rally. The interest rate advantage is obviously there. And the fact that it might actually give the economy a boost, much needed, given that they've still got a big struggle on with some of the, their credit mountain that they've accumulated. And given the fact that industrial profits have uh, decelerated quite rapidly, which is not good news for the Chinese debt mountain, uh, then maybe it is the yuan which could uh, be the biggest beneficiary uh, if we do have a situation where we are looking at gridlock in Congress.